Very good afternoon to one and all. Today, this class is for class 8, Biology of course, and the chapter is Ecosystem. And today, we are at the last phase of Ecosystem. We'll be learning today about interdependence between organisms. Why the organisms are interdependent to each other. And we will learn today what is the need of interdependency. Now, apart from that, we will also learn that interdependence of organism is having few types like symbiosis, predation and parasitism. So, keeping all the things apart, first we need to learn why the organisms are interdependent. So, first thing, the foremost thing, why the organisms are interdependent? The organisms are interdependent so that they could get the benefit from the other organisms so that they could get the benefit from the other organisms in many cases we can find that one organism is benefited and the other organism is also benefited one organism is benefited but the other organism is harm apart from that we will also learn about balance in nature greenhouse effect both the man-made and the natural one conservation of natural resources all these things we will just see in today's class so let us start without wasting any time yeah so first of all interdependence between organisms so the organisms are interdependent with on each other so that they could get the benefit the very nice example without going to the technical part first let us observe the example practically around us let us you might have seen when the during the monsoon season especially and during the humid weather conditions cows and buffaloes on their shoulders on their hump you can find the crows are sitting गाय या भैंस है उसके ऊपर हम देखते हैं कि कभी कभी कौआ बैठा हुआ है द क्रोज आर सिटिंग एंड दे आर पिकिंग समथिंग फ्रॉम देयर शोल्डर और फ्रॉम देयर बैक दे आर पिकिंग समथिंग एक्चुअली ड्यूरिंग द मॉनसून सीजन व्हाट हैपेंस स्मॉल स्मॉल इंसेक्ट्स आर स्टिक ऑन द शोल्डर्स ऑफ द काउज एंड द बफलोज दोज क्रोज आर कमिंग to eat those insects. Now here you tell me both the organisms are benefited. The crow is filling its stomach and the cow, cow or buffalo both are free of those insects. The insects cannot do any harm to them. So you might have, you might you can observe in the village areas or in the semi-urban areas if at all you'll go you can observe these things. Now apart from this we will now go to it after interdependence between organism I hope you can understand my first practical example what I, what I have observed in these many days it's a best example of interdependence between organisms now under this interdependence between organism first one is symbiosis what is symbiosis symbiosis is an association between two organisms or two population where both the organisms or the populations are benefited for example, lichens. Lichens is the association between algae and fungi. Algae and fungi. Lichens is the association between algae or fungi. You can tell fungi also or you can pronunciate fun fungi also. Either you can say fungi or you can say fungi. Both are correct. Both are acceptable. So what happens? This symbiosis with lichens, symbiosis association is lichens is equal to algae plus fungi. Lichens is the association of algae and fungi where the algae is having the chloroplast and chlorophyll. So if the algae is having chloroplast and chlorophyll, very surely we can understand one thing that yes, this algae can prepare food. They are autotrophs, they are producers. The algae will prepare food for the fungus. And once the fungus received the food, the fungus will help the algae by providing support to the algae. Let's say the algae under the river or under the pond is moving and wherever it will get food, it will try to hover around the food, it will try to get support on the food, it will, try, it, it will try to hold up the food. That holding, that support or that anchorage is provided by the fungi. Fungi will help the algae to hover around or to hold upon something or to fix upon something means support just like the roots know in the plants are helping the plants to get a mechanical and physical support similarly the fungi will also help the algae to get one anchorage or support mechanically or physically and algae in return will provide the food to the fungi means very clearly we understood one thing here that both the organisms are benefited now we will talk about legume legume means the plant like pulses, beans, peas, these are all legume plant, nitrogenous plant, means the plant which needs, needs 
more amount of nitrogen for their growth. The plant which require more amount of nitrogen for their growth, growth is called as legume plant. In legume plant we can see rhizobium plus roots. Rhizobium is a bacteria. Is a microorganism, is a bacteria which resides on the roots of the legume plant which helps the roots of the legume plant to convert the complex nitrogen into simple nitrogen. Nitrogen in the atmosphere is available in a complex form. To convert that complex form into simpler form, rhizobium is required. The roots of the legume plant provides home and food, provides shelter and food to the rhizobium, whereas the rhizobium will convert the complex nitrogen into the simple nitrogen so that the root can absorb it and the plant can grow. Again, both the organisms are benefited. The microorganism rhizobium also is benefited as well as the plant is also benefited. So I hope you can understand. Now, next is mycorrhizae. Mycorrhizae fungi plus roots. Association of fungi with roots. <coughs> 80, <coughs> sorry, 80% of all, 80% of all the higher plant is having this mycorrhizae. That is fungi plus roots association. Now, here legume also rhizome plus roots, here mycorrhizae is a fungus plus roots. So, many people will believe that both <coughs> rhizobium and fungi, they are having the same function. No. Rhizobium helps in converting the complex nitrogen into simpler nitrogen so that the plant can accept it. But mycorrhizae will convert the complex mineral present in the soil into simplest mineral so that the roots can absorb. And again, in return, the roots will provide the food as well as the shelter to the fungi. So, symbiosis is such an association where both the organism, either in the case of lichens or mycorrhiza or in the uh, <coughs> legume formation, both the organisms will be benefited. No one will be harmed. None of the organism will be harmed. Now, talking about predation. Predation in animals and predation in plants. What is predation? One who is attacking an animal and eating it. That is known as predator. For example, a lion is attacking a deer. So here the predator will be the lion and the prey will be the deer. So lion is attacking the deer, killing the deer, eating it. So who is the predator? Lion. Who is the prey? Deer. So predator-prey relationship is very much necessary. And both population, both of them population must be in control. In some regions, we can find where there is no carnivores. Herbivores population will go on, keep on arising and they will eat all the producers there. So there is no carnivores. So only one population will dominate the other. Now, in an ecosystem, if at all we are find, finding some amount of carnivores are also there, some amount of herbivores are also there, then that ecosystem will be in balanced way. In a balance, it will find its own balance. So that is the reason why that predation in animals must be in a controlled way. There must be some amount of carnivores, there must be some amount of herbivores, there must be some amount of producers. So herbivores will eat the producers and herbivores itself will be eaten by the carnivores. This is what. Now, <clears throat> predation in plant. In plant, how the predation is done? The cell sap. What is cell sap? Cell sap means the mixture of water and minerals in the plant is called as the cell sap. So that cell sap is highly nutritive highly nutritive and some insects feed upon that cell sap and those insects are called as phytophagus phytophagus i will write here phyto p h y t o phytophagus 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 are group of insects which will feed upon the cell sap that is the mixture of water and minerals so what happens those insects those bugs will feed upon the cell sap of the plants or the trees and they will eat that sap. They will feed upon that sap. They will eat that sap. In terms of what happens, if the bug's population increases, they will feed on more and more cell sap and the plant, though it is generating its own food, will not satisfy its own body and the plant will die. So again, the ecosystem will be a failure one. So there will be a considerable amount of insects or bugs and considerable amount of producers so as to make the ecological balance. Means, if in an ecosystem, everything, each and every organism's population is under control, that ecosystem will be a successful one. That ecosystem will be a successful one. Then there will be a no problem, that ecosystem will not fail any time. But at the same time, if any of the organisms 
population is fluctuating either increasing to or decreasing a lot then it will be a problem for example if there is no deer for example if there is no deer in a particular ecosystem in a forest and only plants and lions are there then lion cannot eat plants only the deer can eat plants so slowly slowly the lions will also die because there is no deer to eat and finally the plant will overtake the whole ecosystem that is also bad that is also bad now what happens so i guess in animals and in plants you understood this topic very nicely that if any of the population fluctuates then the ecosystem may be unstable so for having a perfect particular and specific ecosystem the balance must be there in the number of animals or in if at all it's an animal based ecosystem the number of herbivores carnivores and producers must be there uh, in a considerable amount or in a balanced way and if at all it's a plant and phytophagous relationship the number of insects and plants must be in a proper population otherwise there will be a problem now parasitism host parasite relationship parasitism is such a kind of uh, uh, what we can say is such a kind of uh, relationship where one of the animal will be benefited not animal one of the organism i must say not animal one of the organism will be benefited and another organism won't be for example let us talk about malaria people's when we are getting malaria that is known as mp, MP malarial parasite that parasite when from the sick body infects an healthy body the parasite will grow in our body the parasite will grow in our body and our body will be sick we will get headache fever chillness lots of complexities will be get vomiting tendency tendency lack of appetite all these kinds of all these sorts of things will be getting but at the same time the parasite in our body will be benefited and its population will be increasing its population will be increasing so what happens here one organism getting the benefit another organism is harmed simply take the example of the liver fluke which is growing in human liver and when we are eating the seafood like some sea fishes or pond fishes not cooked properly the egg of those liver fluke are growing on the fish in the fish body it will be growing in the fish's body and if the fishes are not cooked properly and we are eating that that egg will grow in our body and the in the in our liver only the liver fluke will start to grow so half of its life cycle was in the fish body and half of its life life cycle in our body so it's a parasitism one organism is benefited benefit one or organism getting the benefit other organism is not getting the benefit rather harmed harmed badly so that is what parasitism so we all know that female anopheles mosquito is carrier of the malarial parasite when it is biting the sick person and then it is biting the healthy person that time what happens the healthy person will get the disease and now the parasite will start to grow in the body and once the parasite starts to grow the host means us or the other animals will start to become very much weak in terms of immune system in terms of mentally as well as physically and the parasite will grow means one organism is getting the benefit another organism is harmed now apart from this we will also learn today balance in nature what is balance in nature we can find that when we are breathing oxygen and liberating carbon dioxide that carbon dioxide is accepting by the plant plant is making food and releasing oxygen as a by product and we are taking that oxygen means what is our waste product plant is utilizing what is plants waste product we are utilizing now like that the balance is maintained but when we humans are interfering more in the nature like factories vehicles industries and continuous we were talking about the balance in nature what happens here the continuous human interference which liberates like uh, human human uh, beings they drive vehicles running factories industries continuously liberating smoke in the environment and thereby making the environment very much polluted and dirty and that is the reason why the toxic gases concentration inside the environment will increase which will cause a really massacre and the ecosystem will go down and the ecosystem will be a failure one it is happening due to the human interference only now here we will also talk about greenhouse effect greenhouse effect are of two types natural and the man made what is natural in the natural when we are seeing when we are going to hill stations and all that time we are seeing with the sunlight sunlight is very much less heat is very much less that time what happens the people of those places they are making a house of glass and they are keeping the 
plants and uh, plants and the small small uh, other herbs and shrubs inside that glass room so what happens there they during the daytime they will open the windows of the glass room allowing the sunlight to enter and maintaining a good temperature inside the glass room so the trees or the shrubs can go for their photosynthesis and it can grow easily but during the night time what they are doing they are just closing the window panes so that whatever the heat is generated by the sunlight during the daytime is not allowed to escape this is the concept of greenhouse but what is the man made greenhouse we people we are continuously liberating smoke through our vehicles factories and industries and the toxic gases like carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide carbon dioxide in excess amount chlorofluorocarbons also called as cfcs making a blanket on our atmosphere that blanket what it does during the day time the sunlight will penetrate that blanket and will increase the temperature of the earth but during the night time when the earth will radiate that temperature try to radiate that temperature the earth cannot do it why because that blanket of toxic gases will not allow the sunlight and the heat to escape light may dissipate during the dark time but at the dark time the heat cannot dissipate because the blanket which is formed by the toxic gases over our atmosphere restricts the heat to radiate out and thereby globally it is increasing the temperature and slowly slowly the icebergs are melting increasing the water level this is what now next we will talk about conservation of natural resources of course what is conservation of natural resources whatever the natural resources are there whether it is a plant whether it's an animal whether it's any endangered species means species which is about to extinct if at all we are conserving them then we are conserving our environment you can see everywhere in the hill station especially the zoological park and the botanical park park are there why why they are making the zoological garden as well as the botanical garden so as to restore the animal life and the plant life by restoring that animal life and plant life directly we are saving our ecosystem and once the ecosystem is saved then it won't be a failure one it will be a of great success and the nature will sustain itself we will get proper rainfall we will get proper climatic conditions in each and every month whatever the climate changes are expected those climate changes we can see by conserving our natural resources and that natural resources conserving will allow a very good habitat for the animals and for the plants to live in that is the reason why conservation of natural resources is needed as well as this conservation of natural resources will also allow the ecosystem to be a successful one so i hope you can understand through this video go through the textbook and if any doubt you can ask thanks a lot